Hey everybody, I just opened up Jump to show you pretty quickly how you can get descriptive statistics right out of the Jump platform. And we want to come up here and open the same data that we were using in our uh, Excel example. So hang on while I navigate to that. So Jump should show you any Excel or Jump files in your folders. If it doesn't, uh, you can try making sure that, you know, maybe it's either you're looking for a CSV file um, or you've got some other format, some R, SAS. So it is set up to find all of those, but the default is just to show you the Excel and the jump files. So I can just click on that and click open. And it brings up this window just to make sure that it's importing it correctly. It wants to know that indeed the column headers are that first row. It wants to know where my data actually begins, the first row and the first column, right? And sometimes you might have maybe two rows that have column headers. You could specify that if you wanted to. So this is just to make sure it's going to update and import the way you want it to. So it does look pretty good. I'm going to click on import. And once I've got my Excel sheet opened, the first thing I want to do is make sure that it's imported all of my variables correctly. So these little symbols here represent the data type. If you see this little triangle, you can click on it, it tells me that I have continuous data and that's, you know, true or not true, right? I actually think that year is more ordinal. I don't have 1988.7 and 1992.75, um, so I actually think that's ordinal. My plot numbers in the same way, they're not continuous, they're ordinal. Lat and long are continuous. My region, ah, it's telling me that this is nominal, which is true. So you would just go through and make sure that these are all correct so that um, when you're doing your analyses, Jump knows how to treat those correctly. So once you make sure you have that the way you want it, I would suggest saving it. And I'm going to put it right back in the same folder. And now I can get right down to it. All the descriptive statistics are housed in the Analyze tab under the Distribution choice. So I select that and now I just have to pick which variable I'm interested in. And we've been working so far with FSI. So I'm just going to add that into the Y column or the variable that I'm interested in. And I click OK and Jump gives me pretty much everything it thinks that I might want. Now note it gives us a histogram sort of standing up on its side. I don't particularly like this. So I can come in here to the magic red triangle go to the display options and ask for a horizontal layout. To me, that's much better, much more, I don't know, intuitive. So it's always giving me a visual. Jump likes to give you visuals. I see my histogram, right? And I can see my box and whiskers plot. The diamond represents the mean. The center of the diamond is the mean. The tips of the diamond on either side are the 95% confidence intervals about that mean. This rectangle here shows me the first quartile, the median, and the third quartile. These long whiskers here with the bar show me 1.5 times the interquartile range. That gives me the threshold for outliers. And any observations that fall beyond that are showing up as individual dots. And I could click on these and actually see which um, observation that was, right? It can tell me what row it is. Um, I can go to that then in the data, data table. If I had explored these and I knew that they were truly erroneous, I could actually grab them and right click and exclude them. So I'm not going to do that now, but I just want to show you uh, how easy Jump makes it to clean up your data, sometimes a little bit too easy. So just in looking at this, it does look like we have a little bit of a positive skew here, right? It seems to be dragged out to the right with these extreme values. I can see my median in here. That's the same that we found in Excel. I can see my mean, which again is showing us in scientific notation. We've got our standard deviation and we have our count. Now there are a couple of things that we were interested in, like the skew and kurtosis, that aren't shown by default. But we can ask for those. We can ask to customize our summary statistics from that magic red triangle. And look at all these other options we have here. We could ask for the variance, the skew, uh, the kurtosis. You know, maybe we also want to see, again, it's not really valid here because it's continuous data, but we could ask for a mode. We could ask for the range. So all sorts of uh, additional information here that you could include. Click OK, and now note that these have been tacked on to the original output for summary statistics. 
There was the skew, there's the kurtosis that we were calculating. Still doesn't tell us whether or not these are significant because we have another way of testing for normality for our data that takes into account all of the different requirements for normality. It's a much more um, complete test. And we can get to that by coming back to the main magic red triangle and asking to fit a continuous fit that is a normal distribution. So here it is fitting what would be the normal distribution and it gives us some additional information about that fit. It tells us what the actual formula is for, the, for that curve. It still doesn't tell us whether or not we're significantly deviating from normality. For that, we need to come back to this magic red triangle and ask for a goodness of fit test. Okay, and so now at the bottom of this, we can see that it's tacked on the Shapiro-Wilk W goodness of fit test. We know that if we return a probability of less than 0.05, it means we have to reject this null, which is that the data is normal. So we're rejecting the hypothesis that it's normal. Therefore, that's telling us that we have non-normal data. So indeed, we do have significant skews, significant kurtosis here, and our data is not normally distributed. The other nice thing about the newest versions of JUMP is that if you spend a little bit of time looking through what's in these magic red triangles, you might find some cool stuff. So remember we were talking about one of the problems with Excel, particularly when you're working with that mode function, is that it can only show you one value, one mode. Right? And so here, look, Jump actually tells us the mode shown is the smallest of four modes. Okay, so I can actually ask to show me all of the modes. And here they all are. Right? And this is, again, continuous data, so this is not really a valid metric, but it is nice to know that if you had ordinal data, um, you could dig in a little bit deeper and see what all of your various modes are. So you can uh, close this window if you want, but it means you'd have to start all over. It doesn't automatically save these. If you did want to save an analysis that so you could open up later, come to the main magic red triangle, go to the script, and down here you can see all these different save script options. If you save the script to the data table, what that does, if I go back over to the actual data table, it puts it right up here and saves it so that later I could come back and just rerun it. But notice that if you haven't closed your window, it'll automatically keep that up and allow you to access it just by clicking on, again, down in this bottom pane, it shows you all of the analysis reports that you have open. So we can just come back to this. I could close it, come back over here and say, oh, we'll run this script and then voila, it reopens whatever I just had done earlier. So I think that's a pretty good intro to descriptive statistics in JUMP. We'll play with this a little bit more in class and get to know JUMP better as we work through additional um, analyses. So until next time.